government is embracing flexible work environments as much as possible, but remaining competitive in the labor market is difficult. Nevertheless, we see even more opportunities to improve our services, represent the community's interests, concerns, and vision to do better and be better. Now more than ever, Malibu needs to come together to preserve our environment and protect our community. Malibu has always been at its best and strongest when we are united. Our community is filled with incredibly talented, passionate, caring people, and together there's nothing we can't achieve.
Good evening, everybody. <laughs> the March 25th, 2024 special meeting of the Malibu City Council is now called to order. In-person participants, if you would like to speak, please submit your request to speak form to our clerk here to my right. Remote participants, if you'd like to speak, please join the Zoom webinar meeting printed on the agenda and raise your hand in Zoom when the item you wish to speak on is called. Kelsey, give us a roll call, please. Councilmember Grisanti. Here. Councilmember Riggins. Here. Councilmember Silverstein. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Stewart. Here. Mayor Yearing. Here. You have a quorum. Mr. Parker, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? For, we picked you out of this big crowd, sir. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good, Parker. Thank you very much. Kelsey, can we get an approval a report on the posting of the agenda? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on March 21st, 2024. I need a motion to approve the agenda in a second, please. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, any remote, any speakers? No, we haven't received any speaker slips, and we don't have any participants or raised hands in Zoom. Thank you, Kelsey. So now we're going, to, we're going to recess to closed session to discuss the items listed on the closed session agenda. We'll return to the open session after the closed session meeting and give you a report of whatever we did. So... We'll see you after the meeting on the closed session. Thank you very much.
skate park. Look. Um, skate park. Look, um, I know not everybody, you know, you heard, heard a negative comment about it tonight. We're trying to get this skate park built. And you can say what you want to, negative, you should have done it this way, should have done it that way. The objective is...
How did you know it was wrong? I was here last week, or I heard you talking about whether it was last week. I wanted to say something. Uh, yeah. Second row. Uh, Who wants to be the attorney? Which young lady wanted to be the attorney? Nobody? They're not saying it now. So. All right, folks, we're almost ready. Remember, you got to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, so get ready to do that. It's an important part today. Wow. You don't have to get quiet. You're okay. It's all right. <laughs> we just have to wait for 6.30. We have a 6.29. Right. Do you have a question? Sorry. Why do we put it on TV? Oh, that's so we have a feed that goes out to the community and on YouTube. So we get to see, we get to see up there what everybody's seeing on television. Last question. Go ahead. There's two speeds. Yes. Yes, there are. I know. <laughs> we confuse ourselves sometimes, too. We are not prejudiced against Steve's. All right, we'll take as many Kelsey? as we can get. Ready to go. Okay, we're going to start the meeting, ladies. So on March, the March 25th, 2024, regular meeting of the Malibu City Council is now called to order. Mayor, did you want to get a closed session report and adjourn the special meeting before starting the regular That'd meeting? Probably good. This is why we've got Kelsey. Whenever I make a mistake, she corrects me. Trevor, can we have a closed session report? Yes, at 4 o'clock p.m., the City Council met in open session and recessed to closed session. All five council members were present and no reportable action was taken. Okay, ready to go? All right, so let's go back. March 25th, 2024, regular meeting of the Malibu City Council is now called to order. In-person participants, if you would like to speak, please submit your request to speak form to the clerk on my right. Remote participants, if you'd like to speak, please join the Zoom webinar meeting printed on the agenda and raise your hand in Zoom when the item you wish to speak on is called. Kelsey, can we get a roll call? Councilmember Grisanti? Here. Councilmember Riggins? Here. Councilmember Silverstein? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Stewart? Here. Mayor Uring? Here. You have a quorum. All right, ladies, we need a Pledge of Allegiance. Who's going to take, who's going to come to the microphone and lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? You all want to come up? Come on. That's it. Hi. Hello. Ready? Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, for indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For, see yourself on TV? Bye. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Good. Okay. Do you want to say who they were? Or? Uh, we will later. Okay. Can we get a report on posting of the agenda, please, Kelsey? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on March 14th, 2024. Need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Need I'll a second. I'll second. All in favor? Before, I have a question about the agenda. Go right ahead. The, as is not un unusual one of the items is a um, continue a recommended continuance of a hearing why do we have that on the agenda when we don't get it's a foregone conclusion that it's going to be continued because we didn't get a staff report so why does it even appear on the agenda with a recommendation that we agree to continue it when we don't have any choice uh, somebody want to answer that for I believe that it's, it's usually that's the case because if the council continues the item, then renoticing is not required for the hearing. So we have to send out new notices for the new date. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So I need a motion and approval. And Mayor, I think there was a request from staff to continue item number 4B to a date uncertain. Okay. So staff good. could bring that back for you later. Okay. So approval of the agenda with uh, moving <laughs> item 4B to a later meeting. Correct. Can I get a motion? I motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it.
All right, we're going to move now to ceremonial presentations. And give me one second to get my ceremonial presentation done. Yolanda, if you would join us up front. This is the best part about being mayor. Watch this. This is fun. Yolanda is, is our, give me your correct title. I'm the Environmental Sustainability Director in the Building of Social Policy. Very important role. All right. And the reason why we're doing this, Yolanda, there, there are 10,000 supervisors in the state of California, and they do it, they, they pick one of them as the best. This is the best. <laughs> the California Water Environmental Association is an organization comprised of 10,000 professionals throughout California that represent all facets of wastewater management and resource recovery. Uh, the LIS is comprised of approximately 88 cities, 140 incorporated areas, and community and towns in California. Now, when I was preparing to do this, because I wanted to say something nice about Yolanda. She's been doing this for a very long time, and getting picked one out of 10,000 is a pretty good deal, all right? So I was spending my time yesterday afternoon trying to figure out what I was going to say, and inspiration comes in strange parts. So I got an email yesterday from Terry Davis, who's the president of Big Rock, uh, and I'm going to re read her words because they were better than anything I could write. And, and Yolanda deals with the folks in Big Rock on a couple of times a month with a very variety of meetings. So this is what Terry wrote. I can personally attest to your commitment, your expertise, and your passion for work, as well as your commitment and accountability to our community. Big Rock is grateful for our monthly meetings with you, your patient ear, your knowledge of process and protocol, your ability to recognize what is broken and how to fix it, and your innovative ideas, your optimism, optimism, optimism is refreshing and inspiring. You are a true leader, and Melba was lucky to have you, and so are we. So, very Thank good. You. Now, my pleasure. They're, they're very good. So, what I would like to do is present Yolanda with this plaque that recognizes her accomplishment as Supervisor of the Year for 2023. Yolanda, congratulations. Thank you, <laughs> Say something. Go right ahead. Thank you so much. I, uh, it's, I have been here with the city almost five years, and it's just been a blessing uh, just to serve Malibu and um, just to get to know everybody. I am so happy that uh, all of you in particular are here this morning, and I want to see one of you be a building official and a director at the city of Malibu when you grow up. So best wishes for, for you guys. Spend time in school. Uh, listen to your parents. And blessings and thank you for having me here. I, I, I couldn't have done this without my staff. And, and just being part of the team is, has been a great blessing. So thank you. Thank you. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is invite you long, long ladies to join us up here. We're going to take some pictures. Come on up front. The city council members, if you'd like to come down and join us in the picture, we'd love to have you. More of those young ladies. All right. Come on up here. Thank you. 
Cheese. Look at his first, and then I'll do mine. Cheese. No, go, go. You, everybody, do it all at the once. Table. We got gotta get everybody lock in on a smile. Okay. One, two, three. Great. Oh, great. Fabulous. Right. Very good. Thank you very, very much. Does the audience know who these are? I'm going to. And I, I apologize, I did it wrong. For anybody who is watching from home, this, these are, this is a Girl Scout troop that has come today to join us to a little, learn a little bit more about what we do here in the city. Uh, they've had a chance to, do, to talk to our, some of the folks here, and they all sat in the, one of the seats on the city council dais. So I want to thank you very, very much for you guys having the interest in doing this, and we hope to see you here again. So thank you very much. What troop number are you? Thank you. Okay, very good. Now we're going to move to some presentations from the Los Angeles County Fire Brigade program. So who's going to give us that update? In this portion of the meeting, we let people come in and they talk to us. They tell us what's going on. This is a group that's been working for, to deal with fires back in, in Malibu. Uh, so they're going to tell us what they're doing and how they can extend their program. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Mayor, uh, members of the, uh, the council, distinguished guests, members of the community. My name is Brent Woodworth. I happen to be the chairman and CEO of the LA Emergency Preparedness Foundation. We're going to talk about the Community Brigade Program, which is designed to help empower communities to be more resilient by working together in a collaborative manner with government agencies and, and with each other. Can I get the next slide, please? Oh, I can use the G. It's automated. All right, great. Um, unfortunately, Chief Smith can't be with us today. He had to respond to an emergency just a short time ago. But Drew Smith has been extremely involved since the beginning of this program in helping to guide and work with us. His expertise is invaluable. Um, we couldn't do this without him, without Chief Maroney, without Chief O'Brien. Uh, they've all been outstanding throughout the project. On my right-hand side is uh, everybody I think knows, Keegan Gibbs, a local community member, artist, designer, and the director of our field operations. Uh, myself again, Brent Woodworth, the chairman of the foundation itself. Very brief history for you. In 2008, um, the LEPF Foundation was started to support the county and the city of Los Angeles in bringing together the resources of 14 different business sectors, the different folks within the um, financial communities, the faith community, um, in working with academic institutions and nonprofits, and for 10 years operated the Business Operations Center inside the city of LA, working with law enforcement, fire departments, government agencies throughout the region in responding to events. 2018, the Woolsey Fire occurred, and we partnered with some of our academic institutions in developing an independent report on the Woolsey Fire, but the most important thing was the second half of the report which focused strictly on a roadmap to resiliency. How do you get from the challenges that we're facing within these communities to become far more resilient in a collaborative manner? And we looked at short, medium, and long-term ways to do that. From 2019 through 2023, we then worked to try to implement that. And that was done in partnership, again, with the foundation, with LA County Fire, uh, the LA County Board of Supervisors, Cal Fire, Malibu Foundation, Habitat for Humanities Corps, and a number of other partners. Um, the result was the Community Brigade Program, which is a monumental change in how fire departments work with the community. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second, but we're delighted to have that here in Malibu. It is going to cover seven communities. These are the seven pilots we have, Malibu West, uh, Ventura County Line, Point Doom, Corral Canyon, Big Rock, Topanga Canyon, and Hidden Hills. These were all approved by Chief Maroney and by the entire group as we move forward. Let me turn this over to Keegan. Yes, sir. 
Evening Council, thanks for having us. Um, as you know, uh, or some of you may not know, my um, experience during Woolsey is kind of what inspired uh, my involvement with this program. And uh, I'm really excited to personally to see this happen. So I'm a big believer. So um, engagement roles for the brigade. So break it down into three different pre-incident, during an incident, post-incident. Pre-incident, um, number one focus, especially when it comes down to wildfire preparedness and resilience, is home hardening is encouraging neighbors to harden their homes, get assessments done, and follow through with uh, that hardening work. Uh, for the brigades, everybody will get training. Uh, it's all very basic firefighter behavior, operations training that is standard for LA County Fire and all firefighters across the West. Um, everybody will have uh, access to increased situational awareness. One of the interesting things that many people don't know is that on the morning before Woolsey started, Drew Smith, the chief, uh, Assistant Chief sent a bulletin to all the neighboring cities and LA County saying, hey, if a fire starts today, it's going to get away from us and it's going to be, it's about as bad as it gets. And sure enough, that evening the fire started and that was Woolsey. So uh, having access to that information is really important. Another pre-incident is identifying community strengths and weaknesses. As neighbors and community members, we all know where the weaknesses are of each community, whether it's an elderly person or it's a strength like a, a pool or somebody with a pump or somebody that's a paramedic, et cetera. So during an incident, uh, the primary goal is to work with LA County Fire to achieve the incident objectives. We would place the liaison at incident command to make sure that there's great communication with whoever's running the incident. We would provide evacuation support for the communities including just like checking on the elderly people to make sure that they are helping help getting help getting out and support for ember and spot fires so after people have evacuated and the fire fronts come through is to go through around and protect structures through those ember and spot fire cleanups as many people don't know is that a majority of homes actually burn down 24 36 hours after when a very small little speck kind of turns into an entire structure fire uh, everybody, all the volunteers will get um, LA County Fire volunteer IDs and LA County Sheriff volunteer IDs and will also get California Disaster Service Worker insurance during an event So, and, and also training. So in case somebody sprains an ankle, gets hurt, they're covered under workman's comp under the uh, California, the State of California Disaster Service Worker Program. Everybody's issued PPE and radios that can communicate with the fire department. And then post-incident, um, it's really about staying unified in messaging of incident updates, as we saw in Woolsey. There was so much bad mixed information that would get spread around. So there's no better way to spread good information than from within the community itself. Uh, the brigades would also help with repopulation efforts, which was also an issue with the roadblocks, et cetera, and people wanting to see their properties. And we would stand unified in post-disaster community communication with all stakeholders, aka at those big community, com community meetings you know, people are going through trauma to be able to face their, their neighbor as opposed to just somebody with a badge. Uh, next slide. So as a community member, how does it empower our communities? Um, number one, it dispels misperceptions. Uh, as community members, we have a lot of misperceptions about how fire operations work. Um, the other one is that it educates our communities. Uh, fire, fighting fires has been a part of the cultural cloth of our community for 70, 100 years, and we want to empower those people to operate properly within the, the, the incident. Uh, we want to create resilient brigades. Brigades already exist, right? Malibu West, some of the other ones already exist. This program will make sure that those sustain long term and they don't fall apart from attrition. And then it also helps enforce significant cultural change. And now, right now, I'm going to be speaking. Partially, this is what I was hoping Drew was going to talk about, but a really interesting stat that I don't think most people know is during Woolsey, 250,000 people were evacuated, and in the first 36 hours, there was 2,911 calls, and in that first 36 hours, there was 200 fire engines, and you may think that that's not enough, but that's the probably the best response you'll get anywhere in the world, probably by far. So. 250,000 people evacuated, 2,911 calls, 200 engines. That is a stat that exposes the gap between agency and community that we're hoping that this brigade solves. Um, you want to talk a little bit about some other stuff? 
Yeah, in, in bringing everyone together, uh, a whole a community approach, it really becomes a keystone that we work together, the government side, the private sector side. Actually, 80% of the resources are within the private sector. So if we can grab those and utilize those and encourage a change in behavior within the communities, that's the best thing we can do. In mitigating the risk of fire, um, we can do it structurally, and that says looking at your home and trying to make sure you understand where the exposures are and hardening it. But the highest return on investment is actually changing that behavior. Uh, it's almost a 60 to 1 benefit cost ratio when you change behavior. And that's really what we're hoping to do throughout these communities. Just to, is to uh, finalize this, we already have, even in the short period of time we're now in the rollout phase, we have about 150 people who've already volunteered that want to be reviewed to potentially qualified. Uh, we will be doing interviews that include fire captains and so forth and members of our group as we go through that particular process. Uh, in looking at home ignition zone assessments, we've completed around 390 of those and we'll continue to expand those over time as well. And we are very grateful to the LA County Board of Supervisors with their unanimous approval of the project and that of, uh, of the um, LA County Fire as well. But thank you very much for your time. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any questions, gentlemen? Please. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm going to make a couple of yeah. quick comments. Oh, yes, sir. Um, I've had the luxury of working with these two gentlemen in my prior life and prior uh, at the Public Safety Commission, along with Chris Frost, who's sitting back there. And uh, this is probably one of the best ideas that I've seen come along. Uh, we talked about Firefront Following. That was originally the name for this, with the idea being keep, keep the citizens from trying to stay behind untrained, unprepared, and at high risk. And when you think about all those 911 calls, every time a fire truck or a patrolman from the Sheriff's Department has to answer one of those calls, we've now taken away resources that could have been used to fight the fire as opposed to checking on someone. So this is an opportunity for people to have comfort to know that the fire brigade is going to take care of their house. They can leave safely and know it's in good hands. That's what this is intended to do. And it's a force multiplier. Um, it, it, it has the support, amazingly so, when you look back at what has taken place after Woolsey with uh, Chief Maroney, uh, Assistant Chief Drew Smith, who is a champion of this, you've got the full support of the fire department, full support of the county uh, supervisors, and I hopefully, I think you've got the support of the city of Malibu. And in addition to what you guys are doing, just so we don't leave anybody behind, the public safety staff, which I don't see anybody over there tonight, um, we've gone from one person to five or six now when you count the liaisons. We have a much more robust response, and with what you guys are proposing, it's going to be much better. So I couldn't, couldn't say anything more about you that could be any better. You guys are great. I think your program is great, and you've got a lot of support, and um, I think the community needs to know what you're doing, and this is a good way to do it. So thank you very much. Thank I'm you, sir. Introduce you to uh, Susan Duane, who's your public safety. <laughs> there she is back there. I, she used to be my boss on CERT. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Paul. This isn't really a question, I'm, but I'm really grateful that you've, you've taken this and you're running with it and expanding it. And I would urge any resident of Malibu or any of the surrounding neighborhoods who are in an area that's going to be served by this to look into joining the group. It'll make you feel much better about what's going on in your neighborhood when the wind starts blowing. Thank you. Anybody else? Marianne? I just want to echo the same thing. I'm so happy you guys have done a tremendous um, amount of work on this, and it looks like a fantastic program, and I'm so happy that we have it in our community, and I just really appreciate the hard work and all the volunteers in our community that are taking part in this. And uh, Thank your neighbors and make sure your houses. And if you also have questions, you can talk, contact Susan. She can also help with the, the home hardening and other things. Thank you. Anybody else? Keegan has I, I got one Keegan, more quick yes. thing I think that's important that I need to think about during the slide is that this program, our intention is not just for it to stay within Malibu, is it for it to expand across LA County and then potentially across California and then across the West. We'll be going to Reno tomorrow to give a presentation to basically every fire professional in the Western Hemisphere. And the goal is for this to expand, right, and to use all of our hard work over the last five years as a template. And I think that as a city of Malibu, this is something that we can stand really proud that we created together in the, the face of all the adversity from Woolsey that I think that 
you know, will, will leave a legacy for several other communities in the future. So I agree. You're making the Elbow proud. So thank you, gentlemen, very, very much. Appreciate Before it, guys. Ladies, would you, these gentlemen are going to help us fight fires. That's, give them a round of applause. They did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right. Uh, we're on to oral and written oral communication from the public. Ranger Tim, this is where everybody gets to come up and tell us what they think. Uh, Ranger Tim, you're up first. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and respectable city council members. Great to be here. I'd like to give the MRC Ranger Report for last month. Uh, last month, uh, a total of 386 coastal citations were issued. Um, the rangers also cleared a homeless encampment at Puerto Canyon in reference to a previous encampment posted and reported. Also, rangers made contacts with a RV owner that was reported due to the 72-hour parking cap at Carmen La Costa <coughs> Beach Access, and a notice of no camping was also issued to that individual. Also, extended patrols were conducted for public safety, illegal parking issues, and at, at Escondido Canyon Trail and at all beach access areas. No service calls were generated for, for last month, but also nine administrative citations were issued at Escondido Canyon Trail of, of illegal use in the backcountry of being off trail and also uh, three sites were issued for dogs off leash. And at Lechuza Beach, there were two citations that were issued for the last month. And uh, that concludes my report for this month. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, sir. Any qu comments, questions? I'll wait to the end. Anybody? OK, thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Alexander Hakim, you're up next, followed by Michael Shane. So Michael, if you come up, grab a seat, if you can, up front here. Michelle Shane, I'm sorry. I keep saying Michael. I Hi. Um, hi, everyone. First and foremost, I also wanted to honor and recognize Yolanda Bundy, who has been a tremendous asset to the city. Um, she handles herself with professionalism and integrity, and the city is extremely lucky to have her. Congratulations, Yolanda. You deserve it. Good evening, city council members. I wanted to also thank you for your time and all that you do for the city. It doesn't go unnoticed. While we recognize the council has had a lot on their plate with special meetings, we are here tonight to cordially request a special meeting in regards to our motel project. We were supposed to present and speak regarding this project tonight, which has been approved by the Planning Commission and is being appealed by Joe Drummond. But for some reason, the appellant was not able to attend and had to cancel the meeting. We had speakers, engineers, consultants, attorneys, architects, all who were ready and prepared for this meeting tonight. Every time we have a hearing scheduled, it not only takes an exorbitant amount of our time, money and resources, but planning staff's time, city council's time, the appellant's time, and everyone else involved. We have already patiently gone through four planning commission hearings as a result of the appellant, each one lasting approximately five to six hours. The appellant keeps bringing up the same false points, throwing whatever they can at the wall to see what sticks. It is like a broken record of the same false claims, lies, and misinformation, all to delay and slow down our project. We think it would benefit everyone if a decision can be made tonight to have this item set for a special meeting so we can address any necessary points, showcase all the positive things this motel will bring to the city, hear what speakers have to say, and allow time for rebuttal. Please consider a special meeting for this project so a decision can be made and we can move forward. Please also understand that every time this project is delayed, it is not only costing the city time, but also impeding the city from potential um, TOT revenue it would not otherwise not have. As always, thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Michelle, you're up, followed by Andy Lyon. Hi, uh, I'm really here to apologize because I came here last council meeting and pitched my film and a participation with the city and didn't realize that I was supposed to stay to wait and see if there were questions. I'm new to this, so I wanted to 
reiterate that I would really like to work with the city to try to figure out how we can use this film and create a safer environment for us all. And I'll be here till you need me. Thank, thank you very thank, much. Thank you, Michelle. Andy, you're up. Andy's got four minutes. I can play, uh, I can play the, I've got a, something. Got sound? Um, can we set back to four? I don't think there was any sound. Was it supposed to be sound? Yeah. Funny how that happens with me. Um, skate park. Look, um, I know not everybody, you know, you heard, heard a negative comment about it tonight. We're trying to get that skate park built. And you can say what you want to, negative, you should have done it this way, should have done it that way. The objective is only to get the skate park built. And as often as said, do you have a dog in the fight? Well, there were two, two dogs in the fight. That was the city is the applicant for the skate park and the next door neighbor is a developer. The settlement agreement was designed to stop that uh, disagreement, put an end to it with a settlement agreement. And honestly, anybody else that sticks your nose into the transaction really doesn't have a dog in the fight. And if, you, if we end up with a lawsuit on this, it's going to stop the skate park, whether it went through the appeal process or not. It's a lawsuit, an extended time, would stop it until it's resolved. So please, for the interest of the kids, do the same thing we're trying to do up here. Get this skate park going and get it behind us. If you want to pick a fight with the city somewhere, fine. Find another place to do it. Let the kids out of it, okay? That's all I got to say. Okay. You can put the camera back on. On my dog in the fight. Glider, say hi. Hi. Yeah, I have a dog in the fight. That was my comment you were commenting back to. This skate park, you three, Paul, Marianne, and Doug, along with Trevor, um, didn't even want to get the appeal heard. We just heard something about an appeal. We didn't get an appeal heard that city staff had recommended that you deny the appeal. You just went, there's no fight. There's no fight from you guys. You're on the side of Gillen. You know, there is no fight. You submit it. He said, I'm going to sue. You settled. You gave him everything he wanted. You didn't hear anything. You didn't hear what it was based on. You went on Trevor's recommendation that this was going to slow something down. We already got slowed down. We had a skate park that was completely permitted, ready to go, approved, everything done. He didn't have anything to base his appeal on, what was going to base his lawsuit on. Trevor, who then you know, during the one meeting, calls Marianne after the meeting to change the motion to benefit Gillen to take his indemnification out for the city, or however that was, that Paul wanted to have put into that settlement agreement. So if we're taking the suggestion of this interim city attorney that this is going to slow down the process without even looking at it, what kind of fight is that? Who are you fighting for? You're not fighting for him. You're fighting for Gillen, right? This is, you know, I, I am like so tired of this whole thing. We've been to every single meeting. I would, well before you got involved in this, would Papa Jacks, I was getting kicked out of Pepperdine for skateboarding before you even went there, Paul. And Marianne, you've been working in the city how long? You should have known that what he did when he called you, that was wrong. That was wrong. Like, you've been here 17 years you've worked in the city? Come on. You know what you did. This whole thing with the skate park, it's going to be funny that the skate park is going to be the thing that exposes how corrupt this city is with, you know, pandering to developers. Right? Just trying to get a skate park. You guys are just like, you know, you're not on, you're not, there is no fight. And to tell me that I don't have a dog in the fight, I've been here every time. 
it came down to the very end. It was Gillen and Gold against Glider. He was the last kid standing in this thing, and you guys all folded for him before anybody in the public could see that they didn't, the staff said, deny the appeal. But what did you guys do? You, and then you set out a press release saying what a great job you did. Thank you, Andy. All right, Lloyd, you're up next. Let's go skate. Good evening, City Council. My name is Lloyd Ahern. I'm the president of the Las Tunas Homeowners Association. I was here last uh, meeting, and I ask you to uh, kind of join us and be aware of the Topanga Lagoon Restoration Project. And in the two weeks that this has elapsed, I have found out quite a bit more than I was speaking that night. We've hired a, a very prominent attorney that is an EIR expert, hired a hydrologist, and we've really studied, as much as you can study, a 900-page EIR with a 3,000-page appendix. And what's going to happen, and the first thing that each, in, each uh, expert that we hire and talk to, because there's a process, the first thing they say is, what is the city of Malibu doing? And what, what's their stand? And I said, well, I've spoken to them, and they said they were going to join in the EIR. Steve McClure, our city uh, manager, you know, declared that like, two weeks ago. What has happened now is that was, I was kind of like fooling around with a nozzle at that time. Now we've got a fire hose on our hands. This thing is huge. And we've got till April 12th to get our EIR in. What I'm recommending is, and asking, and actually pleading, is either someone from Richard Malika's office that's considered a meeting. We're going to have a meeting, excuse me, we're going to have a meeting Thursday with their attorney, with the head of this whole thing, with Moffat and Nichols um, hydrologists, with our hydrologists, our attorney, in a place down at, at near Topanga. We would love to have somebody from Richard's office, Rob's office, or from Steve McClary's office at our meeting so everybody can hear the same thing. I'm going to videotape it. We're going to take notes. We're going to photograph it. We're going to do everything possible that nobody can say, well, I didn't know, or maybe this or maybe that. It's going to be on tape, totally recorded, and we need your help. Please ask the city staff to help us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't want to say because it's going to have too many people. So I wanted to, I'll tell, okay, Paul, thank you. I'm sorry. Because it's going to be quite something. All right, thank you. Uh, that is the end of public comment, or the public comment, back up to the council table. Mayor, we oh, do Zoom. have some Zoom Excuse speakers. Me. I apologize, yes, yeah, Zoom. There are uh, two raised hands versus Howard Rutsky. Howard, you're on. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. I just wanted to congratulate Yolanda again and say well deserved. I know quite a few people that have gone to see her with what they thought were monumental problems. And she spoke plain English. She calmed them down and she got them through it. And we're damn lucky to have her. So thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Howard. Who's next? Bill Sampson. Bill, you're on. Good evening. I got three things. The first one is, it's not going to notice that the minutes are getting closer and closer to being up to date after being years behind. I'm not sure who to thank. I'm going to thank Kelsey, because she may be the one that did it. Otherwise, whoever did, thank you. It's really much appreciated every once in a while. I need to look at those things and finding them 18 months out of date or even further, which used to happen, uh, was not helpful. Uh, the other one is uh, I communicated with Richard, uh, well, I think I sent something Saturday afternoon because I was hearing bass thumping from 2 o'clock to 10 o'clock uh, at a permitted party, admittedly, but quite a ways away from me. And, you know, you cannot unhear bass. Uh, we should revisit. Uh, 
what seems to be an automatic approval of amplified so-called music. Now, I heard yelling, screaming through that. Richard suggested calling the sheriff or trying to call for somebody from the city. Maybe things have changed. When I've done that in the past, nothing's happened. It's just, it doesn't work. I'd suggest the default be no amplification. Then, you know, they can play it as loud as they want to on their property as long as they keep it in their property. If they can figure out a way to do it, good for them. But it shouldn't be on my property also. The other thing is, I contacted all of you about the Airbnb ordinance. I first brought this up nine years ago. At that time, we had an ordinance that simply banned them. The then council did nothing. One of the council members even tried to help people who were violating the ordinance rather than enforce it. The city attorney at the time did nothing, although she agreed the ordinance was enforceable. Eventually, five years ago, Peek, Mullen, Ferrer, and Pearson passed two ordinances. One is the one we're stuck with that essentially just lets people do motels on residential streets. The other one was the hosted ordinance, and they told all of us, oh, all we have to do is get coastal approval. I guess all those people had never lived in Malibu, those four council people beforehand, because they thought, oh, coastal will just approve anything Malibu does. Well, clearly that didn't happen, and it won't happen. But I don't know what's happening, and it's been five years since the hosted ordinance was passed. Bruce made a valiant effort to try to get something done at the time the Coastal Commission did hear it. I haven't heard much of anything since. Let's get this done. The county's about to have an ordinance, and I'll bet you a bunch of those people are just going to come down here, making our lives less pleasant. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else? Those are all the raised hands. Okay. We will close that section of the public comment, bring it up to the council tables. City Manager, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. A few things to announce and report on tonight. Um, as I alluded at the last meeting, we're still uh, in, in a period of still dealing with uh, weather and, and slides, which are affecting our roads. Um, and just a couple things to report on. Topanga Canyon does remain closed in both directions. Uh, as you are aware, from Grandview to PCH until further notice due to the large active landslide located about two miles north of PCH. Um, Caltrans is reporting that they're still having rocks and slides at the site. Uh, and they're continuing to monitor that. And of course, more rain is forecast this weekend. Uh, so that continues to be um, uh, a, a volatile changing situation. Um, as of Friday, uh, Caltrans has stationed flaggers to direct traffic on, from Tuna Canyon Road onto southbound PCH in Malibu to help make it easier and safer for drivers to cross the northbound lanes of PCH and prevent wrong-way drivers from entering one-way Tuna Canyon Road. Uh, also, as a result of the active landslide just south of Big Rock, uh, Caltrans restriped the median lane on PCH last Friday uh, or late last week to provide two northbound lanes to help alleviate traffic congestion. Uh, one northbound lane was taken up by the K rolls to hold back the active landslide, uh, so the two southbound lanes remain open. Caltrans is continuing to assess this slide uh, and is making plans to clear the roadway, but the duration on that is, is unknown. And as I mentioned, we do have a prediction of additional rainfall coming in this weekend, starting Friday into Saturday, probably about another inch or so. So we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, in addition to the above, I got a call from Caltrans on Friday who are looking to install a temporary traffic signal north of Big Rock and south of the Moon Shadows restaurant to allow northbound traffic to make a U-turn at the signal. I don't have an ET yet on when that might be installed. Uh, moving on, on, on other things related to uh, traffic safety and PCH, um, I'm sure everybody was aware, but unfortunately we uh, there, there was a single vehicle fatal traffic collision on Pacific Coast Highway uh, on March 14th. It was outside the city limits near the Ventura County, uh, Los Angeles County line. Um, but uh, it's still on the stretch of the road that we're con considering to, uh, um, you know, that we're, we're working on and which Caltrans has identified as, as part of the safety enhancement study. Uh, so right now, we believe that that would push, unfortunately, the total number of fatalities up to 60. Um, 
On the good side, um, we continue to support the, the bill for speed cameras, SB 1297. Uh, of course, it was introduced by Senator Ben Allen. Um, we, the city is preparing to have um, some folks testify in support of this bill on uh, two weeks before the Senate Transportation Commission. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Uh, moving on, um, the application deadline for those for folks who are interested. I see we lost our Girl Scouts for anybody who's interested in serving on our Harry Borofsky Memorial Youth Commission. Uh, that deadline has been extended to April 19th. It's for students actually in grades 7 through 12. Uh, for folks who are interested, please see information on the city's website. And then if I could get uh, our folks to pull up a, um, a flyer for a wildlife and disaster insurance online town hall. You have that slide ready? Oh, okay. No, that's all right. Well, you, let's go back to that one. We'll cover that one. So. so this is to announce our uh, second workshop for the Coastal Vulnerability Assessment. That's going to be in person April 18th at 5 p.m. at Malibu City Hall. There will also be a virtual opportunity on April 30th at 3 p.m. And you can register on the information there on the screen. Thank you, Parker. The other... Um, meeting that I wanted to announce is a wildfire and disaster insurance online town hall meeting. Uh, as you are aware, there are many people who are struggling with getting um, homeowners insurance, especially after the, the, the fires. Um, this is being put on by the uh, Malibu Las Virginis COG and is also being hosted by um, Assembly Member Jackie Irwin. Uh, it's going to be hosted by Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara. It will be April 4th at 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. And again, this will be a virtual meeting. And at that, you'll be able to hear from experts about how California is working to address the homeowner's insurance crisis and how you can navigate the tools to help you get coverage for fire, floods, and earthquakes. And a couple things just wanted to highlight from the city manager update. Um, our city staff did recently clear a homeless encampment uh, on the canyon area adjacent to the Sweetwater Mesa neighborhood. The area was cleared of large amounts of wooden pallets, tarps, decks, wagons, clothes, and other debris. Uh, people living at the site were offered services and housing assistance. City staff continues to work with our state, county, and community partners to ensure homeless campments are being addressed in a proactive and service-oriented manner. Uh, the city is once again accepting applications for our free hazard tree removal program. The city secured an additional $326,000 in grant funding to extend the popular program. This is the third round since the program started in 2021. Uh, for more information or to sign up, please visit the city's website. It's been a, a bit of time since I've reported on the Malibu rebuild statistics from the Woolsey fire. Um, as of this month, we have now had 350, 371 single-family home rebuild applications have been submitted, and 359 have been approved by the planning department. We have uh, 12 single-family home rebuilds under, under review. We've completed 158 single-family dwellings. We've completed 18 multifamily unit dwellings. Currently, there are 127 projects under construction. And to date, we have conducted almost 10,000 inspections. Uh, excuse me, we have uh, over 10,000, almost 10,000 inspections approved, and we have done over 17,000 inspections related to the rebuild. And in total, we have issued 282 single-family home rebuild permits. Cover that. Also, I want to make sure everybody was aware of the uh, Chumash Day Native American Powwow and Intertribal Gathering, which will be April 6th and 7th. Uh, that'll be right here in, in downtown Malibu. Uh, the event will feature Native American ceremonies, dances, songs, and guest performances. Uh, please come on down and check out Chumash Days. And let's see. Sorry, I got a long list here tonight. Uh, see, I recently I did attend the uh, meeting of the uh, Las Virgenes Malibu Council of Governments. 
Also attended uh, last week the quarterly uh, PCH task force meeting and participated in a mediation session on school separation that was attended by both city and school officials. Also wanted to note uh, for the council and members of the public, um, we received a, a number of inquiries regarding um, the Surf Canyon Center uh, and a number of, uh, the city has received a number of um, complaints that we are looking into. So I wanna let the council community know that we, we take each and every complaint that comes into our code enforcement very seriously. Uh, it's important that the staff uh, investigate each complaint objectively and fairly per the city policy. I acknowledge that this investigation has been taking some time. I ask for everyone's patience as we work through this. And um, as we have more information to report, we will do so. But as always, we try to resolve these matters as thoroughly, as expeditiously as, as we can. And let's see, also wanted to report that we have uh, two new members of Malibu City staff. Uh, one, I'm very happy to report that we have hired Michelle Cook as our new human resources manager. This will be a key person to have on staff to obviously help us with our recruitment and retention goals. And also happy, very happy to report that we uh, have welcomed Hani Baker as a senior planner to the city's uh, planning department. With that, I would be happy to take any questions, and I know that we have Sergeant Sutherland here from the Lost Hills Department uh, for a report as well. Any questions first? Anybody? Uh, oh, thank you. On the screen behind you. Yes, thank you. So on, thank you, Mayor. On, on screen, we do have the flyer for the Wildlife and Disaster Insurance on, online town hall. Sorry, I was not able to pull that up earlier. Uh, so there's the information on that. Um, you can scan there uh, to, to, to the link uh, if you want to RSVP. Be happy to answer any questions. Anybody? Sergeant, you're on. All right. Good evening, City Council. Um, <clears throat> First, I'm going to start with a uh, inquiry which was submitted to the city um, regarding a car crash that occurred on January 5th on um, PCH. Uh, if you recall, in this crash, the um, suspect was driving at a high rate of speed, lost control, and went head on into another vehicle. Um, it ripped the front end of his vehicle off, and he got out on foot and fled, and we were unable to locate him at the time. So the inquiry is uh, asking for an update on that so uh are the detective in this uh case is trying to get in contact with the witness who was there at the scene to have him look at photographs and identify the suspect behind the wheel we have a pretty good idea of who the suspect is but we need the witness to actually identify uh who they saw the night of the incident so the detective is trying to get in touch with that witness but has been unable to at this time, so that's following, continuing to follow up on that. A um, couple other incidents I want to talk to you about. Uh, on the 13th of March, at approximately 10.40 hours, a uh, deputy was driving north on Malibu Canyon from Pacific Coast Highway uh, when he saw a vehicle that started to veer to the right shoulder over the fog line and then back again to the left over the double yellow line in the oncoming traffic. Um, the deputy conducted a traffic stop and discovered the driver had the uh, signs and symptoms of being under the influence of alcohol. Uh, he did field sobriety tests on the suspect, and the suspect had a blood alcohol concentration almost three times the legal limit. He was arrested for DUI. Um, again, on the 16th of March, at about 10.50 hours, uh, a deputy was monitoring traffic uh, near the construction zone at PCH and Latigo Canyon, and he saw a vehicle driving at approximately 60 miles an hour in the construction zone. Um, he did, conducted a traffic stop of that vehicle and contacted the driver who did not have a license. That driver also was suspected of being under the influence of alcohol. Uh, deputy did field sobriety tests and confirmed that uh, the suspect was driving under the influence of alcohol, and he was arrested. His BAC was above the legal limit of 0.08. Uh, 
Um, in another incident on the 22nd, so a few days ago, last Friday, uh, at approximately 2 a.m., a deputy was monitoring traffic uh, in the area of, of the pier and observed two vehicles pass him at a high rate of speed. He estimated the speed visually to be 80 miles an hour. He uses a uh, LIDAR gun, and the LIDAR showed a reading of 84 miles an hour in a 45-mile-an-hour zone. Uh, the deputy began to give chase to those vehicles, and as he was trying to catch up, the two vehicles decided to accelerate together as if they were racing one another. Um, the deputy estimated their top speed of 102 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone. And it, caught, uh, it took the deputy 1.2 miles to catch up to the vehicles. Um, and was, they were, he was able to uh, do a traffic stop on the vehicles uh, at Carbon Canyon and PCH. Uh, both vehicles stopped and the deputy arrested both of them for engaging in a speed contest and impounded both their vehicles for 30 days and arrested both suspects. Um, and this deputy, he's uh, one of the uh, exper more experienced traffic deputies we have here. He actually wrote this in, rep in his report, which I think is uh, very, very unique because you don't see this too often, but I'll read this here. At 95 miles per hour, a vehicle travels approximately 140 feet per second. The Federal Highway Administration estimates the human perception reaction time to be an average of 1.5 seconds. This is the time it takes a, for a person to see a hazard and then react to the hazard while the vehicle is still in motion. In this case, the vehicles would have traveled 210 feet before applying the brakes. At 95 miles per hour, the vehicles would have taken approximately 590 feet to stop if they had encountered a hazard. So, I mean, he definitely took it to the next level in his report, and that's what we like to see because you can't refute that in court. The facts are the facts, so I'm happy to see that. Um, switching gears here, uh, our DNA uh, technician, she got another solve, so I'll tell you about it here. So uh, this is a theft of a catalytic converter which occurred in Malibu on November 2nd, 2022. In this case, uh, the victim noticed his catalytic converter was sawed off his car. When he looked underneath the car, he noticed a hat that was not there when he parked the car. So the hat was collected for evidence and processed for DNA, and lo and behold, we got DNA off the hat. So uh, this suspect, he's a male Hispanic, born 1984, with a last known address in Los Angeles. He's a career criminal who's also on probation. He has priors for kidnapping, hit and run, burglary, resisting arrest, escape, vehicle theft, vandalism, domestic violence with injury, criminal threats, trespassing, and multiple narcotics based violations. And the suspect had two case to case matches in which his DNA was recovered from burglaries which occurred in LAPD's jurisdiction. So a warrant is out for his arrest currently. Um, if you recall our last meeting, the uh, Pepperdine Cross Country Girls who were here to talk about their experience. So a sh short time later, a few days later, deputies located that suspect uh, waiting for a bus here in Malibu and arrested that suspect. And the DA filed felony criminal threats against the suspect. So he's currently in LA County Jail right now with a pending court date in April. So. And finally, um, Malibu Lost Hills Sheriff Station uh, participated in Baker to Vegas this past weekend, which is an annual running tournament. Uh, for those who don't know, it is a 120 mile relay race from Baker to Las Vegas, so Baker to Vegas. And uh, our team came in 19th out of 32 in our category. Uh, we ran it in 17 hours, 43 minutes, and 27 seconds. There were 258 teams overall that participated in it, and uh, the NYPD won this year. So uh, they set the gauntlet for next year. I'm with you. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Anybody? How fast did you run? <laughs> I ran 8.2 miles at 722 pace. Uh, so.
Just, just quick question. The, um, the man that was um, that assaulted or confronted the Pepperdine runners, mm -hmm. you said he's in jail. Um, yes. So explain to us the, the catch and release thing and how it is he can be kept and others get free. What's, so his arrest charge is criminal threats. It's uh, section 422 of the penal code. And that is one of the uh, few arrests which actually comes with a bail amount. And so he is in jail with a bail. Um, that's one of the few exceptions to the zero bail policy. Because it was a danger to the person that he, the people that he was um, correct attacking or challenging. Right. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Threatening. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. A couple things. You know, the uh, young lady who had the complaint about it from the, the runner of Pepper. Now I, I got an email from her thanking her us very much and you for what you were able to do to catch that guy. So uh, thank you again for that one. And I can't believe if you're going to get drunk driving on Malibu Canyon, it's probably not the thing you want to be doing. Right. So thank you very much for all your efforts, guys. Can I ask you one question? Just, um, I know you're not making the law, but um, why are the um, people that are driving 100 plus miles an hour not threatening the lives of people such that they get arrested and put in jail? Be, well, that, the arrest charge for that is a misdemeanor as opposed to a felony. So misdemeanors are, are cited out and released. Okay, thanks. So, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, back up to the council table. Any council members want to go first? Paul? Sure, thanks. I just am going to, you know, every, uh, every couple weeks we do this, and, you know, I'm always embarrassed to tell you exactly how much stuff I've done in the past two weeks, and so I try to be a little more discerning about what I do, but this, this month was unusual. Uh, I attended on the 12th, the last city council meeting was on the 11th. On the 12th, I attended a Malibu town hall with about the exterior elevated elements uh, enforcement that's going to be going on. Basically, that's you've got to we're going to test all of the balconies so that people don't die when their the building falls apart. Uh, we had a mediation on the 14th. Uh, we had a meeting on school separation, which was a couple hours on the 15th. Uh, the afternoon of that day, I managed to attend the Parkening Concert Series at the library, uh, and it's a great, if you like to hear people play guitar, these people are incredible, and the uh, cost of a ticket is zero. All you have to do is call them and tell them you're coming. They're there once a month, I think, and it's, uh, it's definitely worth doing. It's at the library, and it's in the afternoon on a Friday at 3. On the 16th, I attended and participated in a CERT team search and rescue exercise uh, that was very helpful. Uh, on the 18th, I attended the composer's breakfast, which was the first time for me at DreamWorks. It's a great program. Uh, it's open to the public. It does cost some money, but you won't believe the people who show up there and the things they talk about. If you're at all interested in the entertainment community, uh, the composers are an interesting group to explore. Uh, on uh, the 19th, there was a bond meeting that was held at Webster about the possibility of future bonds for the schools. Uh, there was a, here's my writing so terrible I can't even read the next one. But at four o'clock, I had a uh, Cub Scouts meeting at, with city, at City Hall where they came here and did something similar to what the, the Girl Scouts did today. And uh, that was interesting. On the 21st, several us, of us attended the steel topping out ceremony for Malibu High School. If you drive by the Malibu High School building now, the skeleton of it is up and they put in place the, the topmost steel element. And that was very good. It, it really looks like, you know, it's, We've been talking about it for a long time. It's real now. So you should go by and take a look at that. You can actually see it without entering the school grounds. It's big enough. Uh, on the 22nd, we had another school separation meeting. 
and then I attended and participated in a Pepperdine School of Law uh, symposium on, on disasters and the effects on real estate and things like that. There were three, three uh, different panels, and I was uh, lucky enough to serve on one. And then on the 24th, which was Sunday, I attended in the opening for here in this room for the art show, which is put on by the our Arts Commission. And uh, Lee, McC Lee McCloskey was the uh, honored artist. That's his work outside. It's fabulous. If you haven't been to City Hall, you should come down and take a look at it while it's here. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Mary Ann? Well, I wasn't quite as busy as Paul, but I had a few events I attended. Um, I attended the LA Commission of Women of the Year luncheon, um, where one of the honorees was our local Kim Lamori. Um, she's done a lot of work in um, the environmental sector, um, making sure that the uh, environment is paramount on everybody's mind, and um, she was honored for that. I attended the same school district separation moder uh, mediations and meetings that Paul did. Um, I also was at the high school uh, for the setting of the, the cap beam, and it's just, it's so exciting uh, to see that school going up, and I'm looking forward to future generations attending um, the Malibu High School campus. Um, I also attended a Chamber of Commerce uh, panel discussion uh, with uh, three other amazing women um, that partake took in the panel with me, um, Supervisor Lindsay Horvath, Assemblymember Jackie Irwin, and um, Pepperdine's Karen Jackson. And we had a great discuss discussion on uh, women in public service and um, how to increase the ranks um, and have more women join in um, on all levels of public service. So that was really exciting to take part in. Um, I did attend, I, I, I had a question um, for the uh, city manager. Um, previous years, we've had a dumpsters located um, at a couple different sites in Malibu where homeowners could do some tree trimming and other things in advance of the brush clearance. And um, I was wondering if that was something that we could possibly work out to have again. Um, I know that there are some uh, property owners that have been able to take part in doing some low-level brush clearance in advance of the fire um, requirements. Uh, it's been several years since we've done that, but um, when I attended the Public Safety Commission meeting and it was brought up that it would be nice to get that back. So if we could look into that, I'd appreciate it. And other than that, I'm just prepared for tonight's meeting. Very good. Bruce? Um, Paul attended everything for me. I didn't really attend anything in the past two weeks. I was actually moved from one home to another, and it was exhausting and worked on it every single day. So I want to congratulate again, Yolanda. That's phenomenal. One in 10,000. Way to go. Um, I just have one question regarding the um, appeal that was tabled tonight. Um, Mr. Hakeem spoke and said that it was tabled because the um, appellant um, wasn't available. Is, is that accurate, or was there some other reason? That is my understanding, that um, the appellant um, was not available and requested a continuance. And my understanding is that um, by, by policy or by practice, we've always granted one continuance to both uh, the appellant and to the applicant. Um, and so that's what was done in this case. Okay, thanks. That's it for me. No, you up. Okay. Uh, first off, Yolanda, I mean, everybody says it, and I don't know how else you can uh, be a better example to everyone. I just hope that whoever came in second or third or fourth is almost as good as you are, because you're, you're the best. And, you can tell it. Everybody in town knows you, and everybody loves what you do for us. So thank you very much. Um, nobody can match Paul. For a, for those of you that don't know it, this is a part-time job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Paul doesn't. Paul's a, amazing. That's Paul. Uh, I did the topping out ceremony for the new high school as well. Uh, by the way, they're hoping to have that school finish the end of 25, the start of 26. Hopefully, the classes at the start of uh, 26 will be in that new high school building. 
uh, attended the COG meeting on the 19th, uh, attended a Chamber of Commerce reception event for the Woman of the Year event, and our own, uh, as she mentioned, our own council member, uh, uh, Mary Ann, was uh, one of the panelists. And I have to say that uh, the other members held their own against the Mary Ann. That's the best way to put it. Uh, Jack Irwin, Lindsay Horvath, and Karen Jackson. Um, very proud of our associate here. She was, she was leading the pack. So. <laughs> Uh, also along for Mary Ann, uh, I don't want to pull an item tonight, but I do want to make one comment about it on the consent calendar. It's the uh, grant writer program. And once again, this is because Mary Ann uh, brought this to our attention and got this done. And I couldn't count up all the money that's in there, and a lot of it is pending. But there's a million and a half dollars just listed on uh, two or three of the 12 items that are in process, and the rest of them don't have dollar amounts to them. They're in submission. So this is like like found money, but it's also better than found money because it's coming to us and it's for our <laughs> projects. And that's the best part. Um, we had, as mentioned, we had the Cub Pack here, uh, 244 to City Hall. And uh, it's, it's fun to have the Scouts, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all of them here. It's a chance for civic opportunities. And I think all of us remember, hopefully, when we did something like that when we were kids, either at school or uh, Indian uh, YMCA programs or whatever you might have had. Uh, I want to talk about uh, Andy Lyons' comments, since I was the video up there. Um, you know, let's make sure everybody knows the story. It's easy to tell a story when you got one side or throwing a scale. Uh, the developer at the Planning Commission meeting said he was going to sue us. All right, so it's on the record, it's on tape. It's going to sue us. So the appeal is being processed, and I saw the appeal, and we were going to I can't say for everybody else, but I was going to follow the, the staff's recommendation. It was it was so egregious, you couldn't approve it, couldn't approve the appeal. But what we did have was negotiations with attorneys to attorneys. We had to have private sessions, private, closed sessions for that. But we also had two open sessions. This wasn't done as a backroom deal. This was done in the wide opens out here. Same room, same everything. So we talked about this. We had full visibility on what we were negotiating. And if we didn't reach a settlement agreement, we was going to go to appeal. But this would have carried on the skate park project on and on and on. The objective, willing to take it on behalf of the city, is to get the skate park built for the kids. It's over 10 years old. I remember when I uh, first saw Papa Jack's years ago. By the way, for those of you in the back from, I'm assuming Pepperdine or wherever, I don't, I don't skate. <laughs> I ski, but I don't skate. So don't look at me out there. But all we changed on this in order to satisfy the developer's concerns, at his expense, we lowered the skate park by two feet and according to the designer, kept all the design and elements just the same as what they were before and we moved it 10 feet to the west. That was it. And for that, we got it accelerated. So yeah, we're not the developer's pocket. We're just trying to get the kids to get something done. And you know, gliders as much of a constituent in another 14 or 15 years will be voting. So let's take, let's take care of the kids. Let's get the skate park built. If you want to fight the city, let's sit on something else, okay? Um, Michelle, I think uh, Steve uh, McClary is working with you, hopefully, on your project. I think that's the case. I hope we have something working on that. And um, let's see, I think that's it. That's all I've got. Over to you, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, we got to get Paul a job. It's been all this time. He's already did. Uh, okay, I, I attended the art exhibit we had here Sunday for Lee McCloskey. I mean, it was a, it was a great show up, great turnout. Uh, we had the, the meeting started at noon. We had people here at eleven o'clock uh, trying to get in. So I mean, I think everybody had a good time and they appreciated the effort that he's gone through. I also attended the school board or the school meeting where they were talking about a potential bond for the re or construction of the high school. And, you know, it's still up in the air in terms of they're, they're planning either a $100 million, $190 million bond or a $300 million bond. So keep your eyes on that, and we'll see where that, where that whole process takes us. Uh, we had the Cub Scouts here last week. We had the Girl Scouts here today, both of those events. I think, you know, I think the, the kids enjoyed it, right? I think we've had a chance to talk to them, give an idea of what, you know, being a, uh, doing something for the city really entails. So I'm glad we could do that and hope we get a chance to do more of those events. Um, do, 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 do. 
One, and, and I'm going to go back to Bill Sampson's comment. Uh, the supervisors have, have, have initially voted on a new short-term rental ordinance. Uh, they've got to go back and vote on it again next month. But what I would like to do, and I, I think I need some consensus from the city, I would like to have somebody on the staff sort of compare what our current short-term rental ordinance is and what the supervisors are coming up with. So, if, so when, after they make their vote, which I think they're going to do and approve it, we can at least take a look and see if we want to follow their example. So if I could get a consensus, just have staff do that. Anybody have a problem with that? I, I'd like to ask, uh, in addition to doing a compare and contrast, that we also try and bring forward where we are on our ordinance, because there's, okay. I think there's supposed Fine. to be something in process. Excellent. So Steve, Steve's that okay? Yeah, we have yeah we have consent from the council. You bet. We'll bring back an analysis on on both the county ordinance, and we'll also give an update on on where we're at on our STR efforts as Very well. Good. Yeah, something. you got it. Okay. Uh, one of the other, and I I sent you an email. I think you and Richard an email on this one. You know, I'm getting some questions on the lumberyard. What's going on over there? Who's done what? What are we doing? And I you know I can appreciate you, man. I have it for tonight. But if we can't get a re sort of an update tonight, can we get something in the next meeting? Just telling us what's going on over there. Uh, and it's been a while. I know there were a bunch of issues when we ran into the problems, and everybody just asking what the heck we're doing. I'd like to be able to give them an answer. Sure, Mr. Mayor. In fact, um, we do have an item coming back, um, not at the next meeting, but at the April 22nd meeting for an update on, on how we're complying with the formula business ordinance. Okay, but that, that doesn't, it's not all what was going on at the lumberyard. Um, I'm talking about, well, I'm talking about, I mean, we're, pe people were being driven out of there. So just want to really get a sense of what we've done. I mean, I know that there were, there were formula retail issues. Uh, so just, you know, where are, what did we do? What did we find out and what did we do to fix it? Okay, sure. Yeah, okay? happy to do that. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Okay, I want to go back to uh, Mr. Hakeem. Uh, I, and as, as the city manager mentioned that, you know, the, they do have a chance to, postpone one of these meetings if they're out of, out of town. And I think there was a whole bunch of notice on this. This was not a surprise, right? I mean, this was noticed a while back. I think it was your schedule to come in front of us on the 22nd. Is that? May 13th. May 13th. May 13th. Okay, so we, you're, we got you scheduled and you get a chance to, to make your case. Uh, Lloyd, the city has been working on the EIR comments, so we're ready to go for April 8th to get that material to you guys. Uh, that we've been in the process of putting that together. Uh, you know, this noise, you know, Bill Sampson's not here, but I mean, the noise issue, there's got to be some way, if that's going on in the weekend, we, there's got to be some way we can get somebody to address that, because that, you know, they, if it's going on all day, that does get to be a bit annoying. So, Richard, maybe you can take a look and see. I'm, I don't know, I would think that if they got a use permit, there were some noise restrictions in there. Typically, we do that, right? Yeah, I mean, so, uh, so some way, if, I mean, and whether if, if the, the resident calls the sheriff and can't get a response, maybe we should have somebody in the city they can call who can then call the sheriff to get a response. Maybe we'll get a better uh, ability to deal with this stuff on a weekend. I mean, that's the big issue when there's nobody around and they can't get anything fixed. Uh, Paul? I just wanted to point out that in Bill's comments, he said he did not call the city or the or the sheriff's office. Yeah, I understand. We, well, so yeah. it's it's hard for the city, our staff, to do anything if they don't have somebody call them and tell them that something is happening. I understand, but on the weekend, who are you going to call? He can call. We have a line at the city that has the sheriff. You can call the sheriff, and you can call the sheriff right. because they have a lot of people working on the weekends. I understand. It's just you know, it's historically we've had problems getting enforcement done on weekends. So I, I understand what you're saying. A hundred percent of the times you don't call in, they won't do anything. Well, I understand that too. But okay, I'm not going to argue with that tonight. Uh, Run short-term rentals. We got the lumberyard. We got the Cub Scouts. The only thing I want to just touch base on Andy Lyon's comment, and I, I hear what Paul said. I mean, what Doug said. Uh, like I, and I don't, I don't want to go back through what I did in the last meeting, but I'm not opposed to the skate park. I wanted to see it get done, and and I had no problem doing it. Again, my problem is, is the way that it got approved, the way it transpired, and. 
there was a motion put together by the city council that said we wanted to have a very strong indemnification clause in there. Uh, and that's, what the, that's the motion that went to the, the city attorney. When the, the uh, settlement agreement came back, that motion was changed. That indemnification clause was changed. Uh, and it was not changed based upon a unanimous vote of the city council. It was based upon a conversation uh, Trevor had with Mary Ann. Uh, and look, you know, whether that was legal or illegal, I can't tell you. It just does, it doesn't sit well, right? I mean, it's not the way you want to do business in the city. And it does sort of sm smack of taking care of the developer uh, over the city. And I just think that's the wrong thing to do. So with that, I'll let it go. Anybody else? Mary Ann? So, you know, we have... There are timelines that we have no idea how they're going to play out with when it came to the skate park. We could have heard the appeal, and then depending on how the vote for that turned out, um, there could have been a couple different outcomes. One, you know, it is decided one way, and the developer was not happy, and they decide to file a lawsuit. It's decided another way, and it has to start over from square one. The city had an opportunity to look at some proposed changes and avoid the complete appeal and avoid the potential alleged lawsuit that the developer said they were willing to file. It allowed the process to come to a resolution you know, regardless of what Andy said about it being approved, it wasn't approved. It wasn't approved until the city council made a decision on it based upon it being in our hands. So our decision allowed things to take one path that hopefully will end up in us having a skate park sooner rather than later. And I really wish that we could just get past this tit for tat and everything else. The bottom line is the skate park was approved by the city council. We're moving forward on it. We're going to get the engineering. It's gonna come back here for us to review the contract for selecting a contractor and move into construction and funding um, at future dates. So uh, my goal was to get it approved and get it moving along so we can get it open and our residents can start using the amenity. Okay. Uh, let's, Paul? Uh, in Andy's remarks, he had said several things that weren't true. And to me, the one that struck me is he said I attended Pepperdine. And that's not a bad thing, <laughs> but I didn't. So uh, I was at a meeting there yesterday, but I, I did not, I don't have a degree from Pepperdine. I have a son that has a degree from Pepperdine, but Andy's only known me for 30 years. I, I didn't think he could make that mistake. Is that it? That's it. Okay, moving along. Let's go to the consent calendar. Any other, get nobody, there's nobody online. We've done that already. All right, good. Consent calendar. Anybody pull anything? No, we don't have any speaker slips for the consent calendar, and we don't have any raised hands in Zoom. Anybody in the council table want to pull anything? No, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All the ayes have it. Okay, we're moving to item 4A. Uh, ordinance to amend Malibu Municipal Code and modify our official holiday of City of Malibu. Do we have a staff report? Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, uh, staff report. Um, thank you for uh, hearing this item this evening. Uh, in line with the strategic priorities that the City Council adopted last September before you this evening is a draft ordinance number 516 that would amend the Malibu Municipal Code 2.04.030B as it relates to city holidays and including a um, amending the, the official recognized city holidays and adding a winter closure. Uh, the ordinance adopted would add Juneteenth as a recognized holiday in the city of Malibu, and it would bring that list of recognized holidays to a total of 13. Um, 
I do want to point out there is a difference uh, between uh, the list of holidays as presented and then adding the winter closure um, that's listed there uh, in the proposed ordinance. First, among the 13 holidays, you'll notice December 24th and December 25th, as well as December 31st and January 1st, uh, that they're still listed. Um, this is important as it relates to the noise ordinance within Malibu's, Malibu's Municipal Code, um, and that's in that amended section proposed as Section B, um, Section 8.24.030. Um, for example, uh, within that portion of our Municipal Code, um, certain noise is prohibited on recognized holidays, such as construction. Uh, so this would um, make sure that Juneteenth, if adopted, that those would uh, that those restrictions would apply to that holiday as well. Um, secondly, were certain dates, as previously mentioned, um, they're very specific. Winter closure dates, if included, would vary. Um, so, for example, this calendar year, December 24th, um, does fall on a Tuesday, where January 1st uh, does fall on a Wednesday. Um, it's staff's recommendation that you uh, delegate that authority to the city manager on an annual basis to determine that one week period of winter closure, depending on where those dates fall uh, within that recognized time period. Um, also uh, within the packet is an ordinance that would amend a section 15.1 uh, as it relates to our personnel rules. Um, and with that, I will stand for any questions that you may have. Anything on the con anybody online? There are no raised hands. Okay. Back to the council table. Anybody? Uh, just a quick question. Is uh, the June Teens become a state holiday as well. Yes. Okay, so we're is. now in compliance with the state holiday. Holiday. Okay, Correct. Thank you. Anybody else? Steve. Oh, Bruce. I'm sorry. Yeah, two comments. First of all, I'm, I'm glad to see that we're officially adding Juneteenth. Um, unlike some states in the country that think slavery was a good thing for um, giving people jobs, which is absurd. Um, it's not. It was a terrible thing, and we should be proud of the fact that we abolished it, not that it existed. Um, the Christmas, the, the holiday closure, I thought that when we did that last year, it was done on a temporary basis. Um, I'm just wondering if we are, um, if we all have the appetite for making it permanent, or if we ought to just try it one more time on a temporary basis before we um, formally adopt that as a permanent change. Comments? I guess, I guess my, my question is, and I don't have a problem having the holidays. I mean, my, my understanding was we're doing this to help us in our recruitment effort, right? Recruitment and retention. So I don't know if you guys have any evidence that this is actually doing something for our recruitment side. I'd like to hear that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to uh, provide additional information. As far as our recruitment and retention, um, as identified in your strategic priorities, our, our part of those initiatives in terms of Malibu culture is to be identified as that top tier <coughs> workplace. Uh, coming before you will be some other items as well at, at the next council meeting. Assistant City Manager Tony will be bringing forth class and comp. But with that specific to this and, and how it translated into our, our staff's reception of that is it does demonstrate that the city of Malibu values our workforce and, and promotes a work-life balance um, in terms of how staff received um, for our retention efforts. Um, we did, uh, from preliminary reports immediately after the temporary winter closure, um, we did receive that staff was more was refreshed and ready to come back motivated, um, definitely more engaged as far as their day to day. So overall, you know, what comes out of that is the residents benefit from a higher level of customer service, higher efficiency, more engaged uh, staff in terms of accomplishing projects. Um, so that's how this translates to that initiative and, and further promotes that we are doing an overhaul and continuously look to come up with innovative ways to recruit and retain staff. Yeah, I'm not arguing that it made everybody feel better, right? I mean, I, I, I spoke to a lot of the staff after the event also, and they, they were happy. Again, my only concern is we got to fill some of the slots we've got empty. So I'm just hoping this is somehow translating into that effort, and we can do some correlation there that says, you know, it's, it's actually helping us put some bodies into those seats. 
Okay, Bruce, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. So do we know what other cities, if any, in Southern California are closing for that entire week? Uh, yes, I do apologize. I don't have those right in front of me. But yes, we did uh, did a survey of specifically cities in, in LA County um, that we had put forward as part of that resolution. Um, I do apologize, but I uh, believe the, I know that the city of Baldwin Park, for example, um, there's also uh, Hidden Hills, that's that's also a part of that, that has adopted those, um, adopted that. So I, I appreciate it. The city clerk is jumping in here because this has been a team effort in terms of surveying how other cities are handling this as well. Chelsea, you got Kelsey, you have more information? I, I don't have comprehensive information um, in, in front of me. I'm, I'm trying to find what I, I could. I do remember Hidden Hills was one of our neighboring cities um, that offered that benefit. Thousand Oaks also closes during um, the week between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, off the top of my head, that's all I have for you. Okay. All right, thanks. I'll make him. Uh, Wait, you still going? No, I'm no. done. Doug? Marianne? I'll second. You've got to make the motion for I you. I made the motion. <laughs> <laughs> and that motion is? <laughs> to approve. <laughs> okay. Get a motion, get a second. That would be to introduce on, on first reading ordinance number 516, an ordinance of the city of Malibu amending Malibu Municipal Code section 2.04.030B regarding city holidays to include Juneteenth as a city holiday and instituting a winter closure and amending the definition of holiday in Malibu Municipal Code. Uh, section 8.24.030. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Moving along to item 4C. Yolanda, they're making your work on the night you got an award? I can't yeah. believe that. This <laughs> Slave drivers are terrible. Go right ahead. Good evening, City Council. The item before you is the adoption of the resolution for the developer fee for the Consolidated Fire Protection District. Next slide, please. In 1991, the City of Malibu entered into an agreement with Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors, establishing the Consolidated Fire Protection District. The most recently, the City adopted Resolution 23 that's 12 establishing uh, the fees for last year's. Next slide. This is a yearly program that is uh, brought to you every year. This program funds the acquisition, construction, improvement, and equipping of fire station facilities. The purpose of the programs is to ensure that these additional resources are made available to protect the lives of the residents and maintain efficient fire protection and life safety services in the areas of the benefit where population is increasing. The city delegates the authority administrated in collecting the developer fee to the fire protection district. Next slide, please. On January 30th of this year, the Board of Supervisors conducted a public hearing and subsequently adopted a resolution to increase the developer fee by four cents, raising it to a dollar and 17 cents per square foot of new development. This updated fee rate is effected April 1st of 2024 and the incorporated areas within the areas of benefit area number one. Under this agreement between the city and the district, the city must adopt by resolution the updated developer fee within 60 days of the board's adoptions. Next slide. The recommendations for this evening for you is to conduct a public hearing and recommend adoption of resolution number 24-12, adopting the updated developer fee for the benefits of the consolidated Fire Protection District of Los Angeles County. This concludes my presentation. Please let me know if council has any questions. Any questions? Well, I'd like to make a motion that- Mayor. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, there we are. The Before you do that, I just want to note, we don't have any speaker slips or raised hands okay. in Zoom for this item. I have a question. Just one question. Bruce? 
Um, the last paragraph says that under the agreement between the city and the district, the city must adopt blah, blah, blah. Is this something that we don't even have any discretion? We just, we have to do this. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Nice. Go ahead, Paul. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion that we do what we must i.e. conduct a public hearing, which we've done, adopt resolution number 24-12, adopting the updated developer fee and fire station plan for the benefit of the Consolidated Fire Protection District of Los Angeles County District, and rescinding resolution number 23-12. I'll second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Let's move over to item 7A. I'd just like to make one quick comment. It'd be nice if they'd uh, add station 88 to uh, a new building sometime. It's a little old. Is it on the list? No. Okay. Not that I found. Item 7A, who's gonna do that one, Steve? Or Kelsey? Yes, Mayor, we had a resignation from the Parks and Recreation Commission, and we have noticed that unscheduled vacancy, so at this time, Councilmember Riggins can make her replacement appointment after hearing public comment. Is there any public comment? No, we have not received any speaker slips, no, and we do not have any raised hands in Zoom. Anybody on council table? Me? Marianne, you're on. Um, first, I want to thank uh, Kaylee Jenner uh, for her service on the Parks and Rec Commission. She was on it um, prior to my election, and she graciously uh, agreed to be my pub by Parks and Rec Commissioner for the last year. Um, she is a legacy Parks and Rec Commissioner, as her father, Dermot Stoker, was also um, a Parks and Rec Commissioner. And, incredibly active in the community. And um, I just, I, as I said, I wanna thank her for her service and her participation in our community. Um, with that, I would like to appoint Jake Lingo um, as my new commissioner for Parks and Rec. And I look forward to working with him. I think he's gonna bring a lot of um, really exciting um, energy to the commission and to our community um, as it relates to Parks and Rec facilities. Okay, anybody have any comments, questions? Was there any public comment? We checked, there's nothing there. Can I commend Mary Ann on her, her excellent decision and commend the Pepperdine students on being smart enough to show up for the shortest meeting that we have held in the time I've been on the council. Right. So with that, we will adjourn. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Good night, thank you. Can I have the music to place in the huh? background as we go? Right. <laughs>